Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Um, so speaking now is Dennis, and I am your ex expedition specialist, and I work closely with uh, Abby, who's also on the line. And she is uh, with Expedition Travel Advisor. Uh, and we're going to be talking to you today about our G Expedition programs and our Antarctica tours. Uh, so just to get started, um, a few housekeeping notes. So everyone's speakers are muted. Uh, and there is a chat box down at the bottom of this link that uh, you can use to, to chat in any questions that you may have throughout the presentation. Uh, and Abby and I will be able to, to answer those questions for you toward the end. And hopefully we can answer those questions during the actual presentation today. Uh, so to, to get started, uh, the image that you see there is our G Expedition, and that actually used to be a car and passenger ferry, uh, which uh, was in the, uh, the Denmark region a few decades ago. Uh, in about 2009, it was actually refurbished uh, to, to, uh, to operate as, a, um, as an expedition polar vessel. Uh, and the next one here, we have uh, a few quick facts on our G expedition. As I said before, it was completely refurbished in 2009 when uh, G Adventures actually took ownership of the ship. Uh, so again, it's uh, a passenger and, and car ferry, so it has wide cabins and, and massive amounts of space to, to really enjoy uh, the polar regions you're traveling to. Uh, so it holds up to 130 passengers with a variety of cabin styles, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, it's an intimate small ship cruising experience. So again, 130 passengers is, is quite small if you think of the uh, of the polar expedition um, market that, uh, that is out there. So a really great small group experience uh, that you can enjoy uh, the, the Antarctic regions that you're going to be traveling to. Uh, so private en suite uh, uh, cabins as well as uh, a variety of uh, common areas and social areas, uh, which we'll see some images and talk about in a little bit. Uh, so the staff on board is, is really what makes the experience on board our G expedition. Uh, so the ratio is there 10 to one. So one expedition leader per 10 passengers. So again, really small uh, uh, group experiences so that you can share your questions and share your knowledge and, and, uh, and really grasp uh, the regions that you're in through through our experts. In talking about experts, we do also have ornithologists, which are our bird experts on board the ship, our, our geologists, oceanographers, uh, just for a few, for example, um, that we have there, and they'll be with you throughout the entire trip, uh, going on the zodiac landings and and uh, talking about seals and, and about penguins when you're when you're on the Antarctic regions. Uh, and you can even watch, you know, the little penguins bring up pebbles to you or, or you know, other really great stuff like that in, in that region. And one of the uh, so cutest, the, oh, I was going to say, one of the sorry. cutest things as you're walking on the shore and the penguins are walking right up to you and tugging your pant legs and they're, they're, you're supposed to stay so far away from them, but they don't have that same rule. So they come right up to you. They're very curious, very cute. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, and and uh, and that's just you know a sample of of sort of that experience we we provide to our to our travelers on board the G expedition, and uh, and last but not least on board we do have an open bridge policy. So of course you could stay out there at all hours of the day with or without the zodiac landings, and and really just uh, and enjoy the wildlife that's happening around you, or, or take photos of the beautiful landscapes with the snow-capped mountains and the glaciers. Uh, and the mirrored images from the water. It's just truly an incredible experience. Uh, just going off of our uh, staff we have on board, I just wanted to point out Susan Aidy, who is our expedition leader on the G Expedition. And she's the most decorated, I guess, expedition leader that we have in, in the industry. Uh, she was actually recognized by the National Geographic Society and the National Audubon Society. Uh, and recently, she was actually um, giving um, a named a cove after her, uh, and that was given to her by the Royal Geographical Society, uh, which is truly an honor and, and just uh, another reason why uh, our staff on board are, are experts and they're known in the industry 
uh, and, and well-traveled as well. So you're, you're with some of the best. But just to go over a few um, places on RG Expedition, in the top left, you see there the mudroom, which is actually where you'll be able to gear up and put on those expedition parkas and the waterproof pants there before boarding your Zodiac cruises uh, and, and getting into the, to the wildlife onto the Antarctic Peninsula as well. And uh, I just want to that. Point, point out that one thing about the mudroom. Most people wouldn't think about this, but it's right above the engine room. So it's a really warm, dry space. And so after you come back from a shore landing and you have snow covered boots and you have the elements kind of on your gear, instead of tracking that back to your cabin, uh, you can actually uh, leave it there to dry uh, before taking it back or uh, just going out for your next adventure. And that's something that's, that's not very common and it's a nice little feature. That's great. Thanks, Abby. Um, yeah, so that's exactly what she said. It's a nice warm area and, uh, and in a few other photos I'll show you later, there's actually a sauna right next to it. Um, and right over there, you'll see the library. Um, we call that our Lonely Planet Library because it's full of Lonely Planet books. Uh, and you can use that space as your sanctuary, your, your reading uh, time to catch up on sort of the, the birds that you've seen that day on one of the zodiac landings or if you want to know more about the Gen 2 penguins, uh, a really great space, uh, a quiet space if you wanted to, to get away uh, from the, for the social areas. Uh, down there, you'll see the Expedition Lounge, which is our sort of hub of the expedition ship. Uh, and that's where you're also going to see the Polar Bear Pub just behind it. So once you uh, are on board, you'll be able to attend lectures and uh, daily discussions on sort of the really awesome wildlife that you've seen that day whether it be about the seals or the whales, uh, or where you are in the Antarctic Peninsula with our experts there on board. Uh, they'll be scattered amongst the, the entire group so that uh, you can ask those one-on-one -on -one questions and, and uh, really enjoy your time there on board. So those are just a few photos of our common areas. And uh, again, as I said in the previous slides, uh, with in, in addition to the mudroom, uh, that's the that's going to be the the spot on the ship that you're going to be gearing up uh, and getting ready to take off onto your zodiac landings uh, and then right next to that you'll see the mudroom there uh, so if you're brave enough to take that polar plunge up there on the sea uh, you're going to come right back on board and warm up in our sauna so a really great experience uh, and definitely something you'll have to try out once you are on board Right. So many people say that they're not going to do the polar plunge, but then when you're on board, you just can't resist. It's an awesome experience. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so right over here, you'll see the outside dining. So each and every um, each and every voyage that we have in the Antarctic region, we, we want to offer our uh, outdoor barbecue, uh, it would say, is for the for the lunch or dinner experiences, weather dependent, of course. Uh, just to you know, get passengers out on the deck to enjoy the views and enjoy some delicious food. Uh, just another experience that we that we want to provide our travelers there on board. This slide here is uh, featuring our polar bear pub and also our live musician uh, there that we have playing for our travelers in the evening. So once you're done with the zodiac landings for the day, and once you are finished with dinner, you can have a nightcap and enjoy some live music there on board. Uh, a really great way, actually, with G Adventures, we have um, a band. It's, they're called the Monkey Eating Eagles, and it's actually made up of housekeeping and wait staff. Uh, and a really great way to just show off their their talents. And they play uh, parodies of uh, the Beatles or Journey or all the classical hits that really gets the crowd going. So a really great way just to laugh and enjoy your time and and really just bond with our with our staff and with other fellow passengers on board. So the next couple of slides I'll be showing you are the cabin categories, but, I, but first I just wanted to show you uh, our deck plans. So as you see in the images there, there's a variety of decks uh, and, uh, and a variety of cabin categories. So we'll start with uh, category five, which is our, which is our queen bed, um, our queen bed accommodation. So it's actually composed of two separate rooms um, and made up of one queen bed. Uh, so as you see there in the image, there's floor to ceiling uh, windows so that you don't miss a beat of, uh, of light that goes by you 
if you just wanted to lay from your bed and, and enjoy the, the albatross flying by your windows or, or possibly spotting some penguins on land uh, by the window, that's truly your sanctuary um, in terms of, of your accommodation. And that's just the lounge area that comes along with your Category 5 uh, cabin there on board. So if you wanted to invite some friends over from the Polar Bear Pub, you'll, you'll be able to, to enjoy some living area as well. The next one down, we have our Category 4. Uh, so this, as you see there, you'll have the larger picture window, uh, as well as a spacious cabin layout. Uh, so these cabins are a bit more uh, lengthy in size as compared to the lower ones, but these are just a few images just to walk you through those categories we have available on board. Uh, then we have our standard category three, which is uh, the most popular one we have, uh, and we have the most inventory of that as well on board. Uh, and as, as you see there, it's just two twin beds uh, with, uh, with the window there in the middle, uh, and, uh, and it's actually made up of, uh, of the desk area, a wardrobe just behind the image, a, a lounge chair, uh, and there's our, there is outlets there in the cabin. So if when it's a charge your device is there, that's available at your, at your dispose. Each and every cabin does have private uh, washrooms on board. Uh, so that does come with your towels, your, your soaps, your shampoos, your conditioners, and we use the reusable bottles. Uh, so that uh, we'll, we're going to keep our, our carbon footprint uh, the lightest to sustain the wildlife outdoors. Uh, so that is just an image of the private washrooms there on board. And then going further down, you'll see our Category 2 twin share cabin. So just two twin beds there with a porthole window. Same sort of uh, landscape as our Category 3 twins. Then we have our category one triple accommodation. Uh, and there is just a bunk bed when you'll have to, to do the ladder if uh, one of the passengers is there on top. Uh, and there is plenty of luggage spaces underneath the beds and in the closet there on board uh, of, your, of your private suite. And then there's the category one A quad share. Uh, so if you are uh, looking to travel on a budget and didn't mind sharing your room with other adventure seekers just like yourself, uh, we have that accommodation uh, available uh, as well. Each and every voyage and each and every passenger uh, will receive an expedition parka, which is composed of a few different layers there, so an outer shell and an inner shell, and you'll be able to use those on your zodiac landing. So you do not need to pack that for your trip with us. Uh, we will take care of that for you. We're just going to ask for your preferred size of an expedition parka. If in the event, of course, the parka doesn't fit, uh, we have plenty of available on board so you can swap that out. Uh, all you'll need to do is provide um, your own waterproof pants. So for the Zodiac landings there, uh, you'll be able to, to bring that with you. And uh, we do also provide Wellington boots, so the rubber boots. Uh, needed to to uh, explore the, the land of Antarctica. So a typical day on board the G-Expedition, uh, usually a wake-up call is around 7 a.m., uh, depending on the weather, of course, and uh, the, the expedition leader who's, who's operating that voyage will, will give you sort of the coordinates of actually where you are in the Antarctic Peninsula uh, and sort of give you an idea of what's around you. Perhaps there's um, a flock of birds that are uh, sitting on a mountainside or a really great whaling station is just beside the ship. Uh, so really give you an idea uh, and a motive to, to get up and take a look out the window and remind yourself where you are. Uh, and then breakfast is served down in our dining room. Um, and breakfast and lunch are buffet style uh, meals. So you'll get to pick and choose of, of what's of interest to you and, and get that morning coffee in or tea. Uh, before boarding your first Zodiac landing, uh, which is going to be around 8.30 a.m. Uh, so the Zodiac landings are pretty neat. So as you said, as we said before, the, the mudroom is down there near uh, the engine. So that's where you're also going to be boarding uh, your Zodiacs with your expedition leader, of course, and a few of our experts uh, to help you uh, give you that experience of uh, the wildlife. Uh, so the, the, the Zodiac landings are about two hours. 
uh, you'll be able to uh, zip around the the oceans and the and the areas there to get all in your photos of of the mountains and the glaciers and and the reflections of the water, uh, and also get to step on land and and just watch you know as I said before that the penguins walking by you it's truly incredible, um, or you can even watch some seals that are that are sleeping nearby and, and get some really great photos in there as well. Yeah, one of the uh, my favorite experiences was going out on the Zodiac cruising and just taking pictures of these beautiful icebergs and having a minky whale come right up to the Zodiac, lift its head out and stare at everybody in the boat <laughs> for about a solid minute before going back under. It was an experience I'll, I'll, I don't think I'll ever forget. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Some 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 folks and how I like to describe it as it's kind of like a safari, but in polar regions. You're you're surrounded by such close up wildlife. Um, so don't forget to pack your binoculars and, and your cameras because um, it's truly an experience you're not going to want to forget. Uh, so around 12 p.m. you're going to board back onto the G expedition and get yourself some lunch. Again, it's going to be a buffet style, so you get to choose your meals that you'd like to to have for for lunch. Uh, perhaps maybe you want to get a cocktail at the Polar Bar uh, Pub, that's going to be completely fine. And then back in the early afternoon, weather dependent, of course, we're going to get you back on the Zodiac landings uh, to get you back out there on the wildlife and, uh, and do the same thing perhaps in the morning. But one great thing about Antarctica and, and polar regions, for example, is that it's ever changing. Uh, you're never going to see the same thing twice, or perhaps you might. Uh, but there's always something new to look forward to, and we have our experts there on board to, to really capture that experience. So after this, uh, the second Zodiac landing, you're going to be coming back on board, and, and perhaps uh, you want to attend a briefing or a recap of, of the wildlife that the different groups saw that day, um, and perhaps attend a presentation from one of our experts who, want, who uh, would like to tell you all about Gen 2 penguins and, and how, they, how they live their lives and and, uh, and learn more about them so that the next day when you go out to, to your next Zodiac landing, you'll know exactly, um, you know, how Gentoo penguins, you know, survive the winters, of course. So a really neat experience. And then uh, last but not least, you'll finish the day with dinner. Uh, again, that's going to be actually an a la carte menu. So um, we have those, those menus available on board. Uh, and then ending your night there with a documentary, whether it be a wildlife documentary or perhaps a movie that, that you'd like to watch. Um, but most folks actually I find uh, are finding themselves at the Polar Bear Pub or enjoying a nice cup of coffee in the, in the, in the library or you know, enjoying the, the open deck policy that we have. So hanging out uh, outside and where it's at, where it's usually always daylight out there, depending on the, on the season that you're traveling in. Uh, so taking um, an expedition with us, with us there's uh, plenty of benefits there. Uh, so we do have resident photographers there on board to help guide you uh, through taking some of the best photos that uh, you couldn't even dream about. So we have those experts there on board. Of course, there's no additional cost for that service that's, that's already included in the tour. Uh, and they're also going to be hosting lectures and workshops perhaps to help you teach some tips and tricks on help you take those better photos in destination. We do have internet on board, so you're not going to be completely cut off from the world, although some folks uh, want to when they, when they travel to, to such polar regions. Uh, but there is Wi-Fi there on board, uh, specifically on decks four and five in the common area. So feel free to bring your laptop uh, or your iPad or you know what have you to upload those photos on social media and make all your friends jealous. And then, uh, and last but not least, we do have optional excursions, which I'll talk about in the next couple of slides with kayaking and camping. Uh, so polar kayaking uh, is truly an amazing experience. So uh, basically what you're gonna be doing is, is boarding uh, your, your kayak uh, led by our kayak master. Uh, and, and that will take you around the, uh, a few of the icebergs there and, uh, and perhaps get super, Close to some of the fur seals and in uh, the in the uh, in the ocean wildlife there. Again, a really great way to to capture those experiences. I've seen some uh, GoPro videos of uh, of seals and whales just you know rolling right underneath you, and it's uh, something you don't want to miss out on for sure. Camping is also an option there on the Antarctic Peninsula tours. 
so camping is, of course, exactly what it is. Uh, you're going to be spending the night there on land and definitely a bucket list option that many folks want to travel to Antarctica for is, is spending the night on their seven continents. Uh, so uh, you would be pitching your own tents, um, but it's pretty straightforward and, and simple to set up. But uh, yeah, a really great way to just bond with your with your fellow passengers or your friends there on board. And uh, and perhaps some people don't even go to sleep. They want to just take it all in and take as many photos as they'd like. So we take care of you on that front. Uh, and camping is available on a few of our, our, our tours on board the G Expedition. Uh, so as Abby and I said before, a polar plunge is a must if you're traveling that far. You, you must really soak in that experience. When else are you going to do this? Uh, so that's, we have a few crazy travelers there in that image on the top left uh, who are shortly going to be warming up in the sauna right after that. And uh, the bottom left photo there you see is our Zodiac landing. So that's going to be about 12 passengers or so uh, on each landing uh, that's uh, led by our expedition leaders and experts there on board that will show you around and make sure you're safely on and off the Zodiacs. And then the, the, the right hand side, you'll see the preparation on uh, boarding our, our kayaking excursion led by our kayaking master, of course, so you won't be alone. All right, so the next couple of slides will be talking about Antarctica specifically. Uh, so Antarctica is actually made up of three different parts. So West and East Antarctica, as known in the image, and then uh, the peninsula. So the peninsula is the closest to Argentina. And that is where our trips are beginning and ending. All right, so to begin with a few of our um, Antarctica bound trips, you'll be seeing there the Falkland, South Georgia, and Antarctica tour. And that usually begins in Montevideo and ends in Ushuaia. So passengers will be going to the Falkland Islands uh, and then going over to South Georgia, which is my favorite part of our trips to South Georgia because there's a ton of king penguins. I'll show you an image in the next couple of slides, uh, but just the amount of penguins uh, is something that you don't want to miss out, miss out on. And that's why South Georgia is so special. And such a key feature on a few of these itineraries. And then we have our Spirit of Shackleton, which is our 21-day tour, uh, and that's going to be in November usually. Uh, and again, that tour begins and, end in, begins and ends in Ushuaia uh, and goes up to the Falkland Islands and then in South Georgia and then makes its way through the Trade Passage and through the, through the Antarctic Peninsula. Uh, so South Georgia here are, is an image uh, taken by one of our travelers um, on the amount of king penguins that you see there on land. And you almost cannot even see the surface of, of, the, of the ground. It's so, it's so overwhelming, but so beautiful at the same time. I know, Abby, you had a few personal um, stories about uh, South Georgia. Did you want to share them? Right. Well, just at South Georgia, um, once you hike up to the top and you're looking out towards the ocean, and it's just like this, a sea of king penguins, there's 400,000 breeding pairs uh, active there right now. And so it literally covers the ground. Uh, the elephant seals are immense. And this is an opportunity where you'll see the elephant seals because you usually don't see those on the regular peninsula only trips. So South Georgia is very unique. Um, one of the I was a, had the chance to speak with a National Geographic Society naturalist and uh, several of them and asked them what the best trip uh, that they'd ever taken was. And it was the combination of Antarctica and South Georgia uh, and also the Falkland Islands as a trifecta. It's very different from the Antarctic Peninsula. Uh, South Georgia has the tall tussock grass that you walk through. There's the whole uh, historical feature of Shackleton and uh, the adventure, his grave is there. And so it's just an amazing experience. It's completely different from the, than Antarctica. Um, and it's a year round destination, but uh, again, it's really only combined with Antarctic trips. Uh, but it's, it's very, so incredible. Exactly, that's great. So here's just another few images there that you'll be seeing on, uh, on these tours is uh, the whaling stations. So as you see in the right hand side and the top left images, uh, or what they consider whaling stations. And that's actually when, uh, way, way back in the day when, when folks used to light 
lamps on the streets with wax, uh, folks used to travel to Antarctica to gather whale wax um, and, uh, and to bring that back to their home countries to light those, those street lamps. So it's a really great historical side to Antarctica that many travelers uh, might not think of until they're on the voyage. Uh, so that's why we have our experts there on board that know where all those whaling stations are and, and know those facts uh, to share those experiences with our travelers. So uh, other than wildlife, um, there's a lot of history to Antarctica, which makes it very special. And then on the, the bottom left is one of my favorites, the sleeping sea leopard, just enjoying his day uh, with, our, with our expedition ship there in the background. So uh, tying in the, the history and the wildlife, uh, it's truly a magical destination. Uh, next up on our trips list, we have here the Antarctic Classic in depth, which is 13 days, uh, begins and ends in Ushuaia, and it'll take you down through the peninsula. Uh, so with the seasonalities, of course, so the pack ice is a little bit more um, in depth through the months of October and uh, in December. Uh, and then once the ice starts to break in the, in the later stages of, of what they would consider their warmer season, uh, there's a more of an opportunity to go deeper into the Antarctic Peninsula, which uh, is pretty great. So that's just our 13-day uh, classic in-depth trip. Uh, and a few of uh, my other favorite favorite images there, as you see the Gentoo penguins at the top left, and then the Necro Harbor, which is a common uh, stop on our Antarctic Peninsula tours. And what we try to, to send all of our travelers to is uh, to get them on land, specifically the harbor. Uh, and another image is there in the uh, the bottom left uh, for our kayaking excursions. As you see there, uh, you're going to be going through the ice um, and some tougher parts. So it's definitely for the more experienced kayaker. Uh, but again, a truly wonderful experience if, if you want to go out and see those sea lions swim right by you or or uh, or watch those whale. Uh, whales in the distance, of course, uh, blow their holes and you'll see the, the, the water come up from the from the horizon. All right, so our 11-day Antarctica Classic is one of our most popular departures, and um, and uh, once you go ahead and, and book those trips through Expedition Travel Advisor, you'll be able to to see a variety of departures there are available. Uh, and again, that is uh, just uh, that's actually our minimum uh, length tour in Antarctica. So it's our 11-day. It's usually our more affordable one because it's shorter, but it gives you a really great uh, in-depth overview of our peninsula tours uh, that will take you in and out of Ushuaia. And there is just our quest for the Antarctic Circle, so our, for our travelers who are hungry for adventure and, uh, and want to really embrace their, their time in the peninsula of Antarctica, uh, that's definitely the trip for them. And there's a variety of those 14-day uh, adventures uh, available there as well. And just tying it up with a few other images, um, as you see, there are the Zodiac experiences there. You'll be going by these giant glaciers. It's, it's truly surprising how, how large these mountains and the, and the glaciers are um, in, in, in this region. It'll truly blow your mind if, you know, once, you, once you are there. And then uh, the Sierra Cove, uh, which our traveler there has uh, taken that, that awesome image. All right, so tying up this uh, webinar, uh, we do have an exclusive present, uh, exclusive offer, actually, uh, just for you folks that are listening here. Uh, so there's 10% off all cabin categories available. So for our 14-day quest for the Antarctica Circle and for our 11-day classic, our, our, and there's, there's two departures there. So for the February 20th quest for the Antarctic Circle, uh, trip for 2019 and the two March trips for 2019 that you see there uh, is valid today up until June 9th. So you'll have a month to, to go ahead and, and get that started. Uh, but just to give you an idea, the 10% off is savings of about $1,300, give or take, uh, depending on the category you're looking for. So a really great offer, a really great uh, way to save some money um, on enjoying your adventure down in the peninsula. So uh, definitely take advantage of that and uh, and uh, and contact us for sure um, should uh, should you want to go ahead and book that. Right, and I will say that that time of year that those dates are, the whale sightings tend to be better. 
And so that's something to be able to look forward to or more of the uh, marine mammals like the leopard seals and, and whales. So it's, it's a great time. Absolutely. Uh, so in addition actually to the exclusive uh, webinar offer the 10% off, we're also offering free round trip flights on select Norway and Arctic 2019 voyages. So um, we do also operate in Norway and the Arctic, as you see there in a few of those images. So if you are interested, um, please do contact, uh, contact uh, Expedition Travel Advisor to, to book those trips, but that is an offer out there, which is valid until June 30th. So you have some time to go ahead and, go ahead and get that arranged. And again, that's a huge savings on flying to such remote places, such as Longyearbyen or, or, uh, or Bergen. Uh, the flight costs can be quite expensive. So we're going to be taking care of that for you. Those flights do originate from Newark, New Jersey. Uh, so all you would have to do is just arrange your flights uh, from wherever you're flying from into Newark, New Jersey, and we'll take care of the rest for you. So tying up this presentation, I'd be happy to answer any of those questions uh, that are out there. Um, and please don't be uh, afraid to, to go ahead and, and send those over to us. Right, and while we're waiting on questions, I just wanted to, to add that the G Adventures, the ship, is such a wonderful way to explore either the Arctic or the Antarctic because the crew on board, I've personally helped over 100 travelers plan their trips on this ship and my colleagues here at Expedition Travel Advisor, we know that when we send them on the Expedition G Adventure ship that they will come back with rave reviews <laughs> from everything from the shore landings to the experienced naturalists and the presentations. Um, so they do an excellent job and I would love to see any of you on there. Great. Um, so for folks who are listening and, and want to reference back to this webinar, we are recording it. So uh, if, uh, if any other questions come up, you're more than welcome to reach out to, to Abby and, and, to, and to her sales team there. Uh, and uh, this recording will be available. Uh, so if you wanted to reference that back, you're more than welcome to. Oh, I, it looks like there was a question about the, um, the bunk rooms for let's see, the quadruple cabins that have two bunks in each cabin, uh, it's based on, the quad and triple cabins are based on gender shares, unless you have a family of four or four friends traveling together. So you wouldn't be able to put two couples in there. It would have to be either um, the same gender or you'd have to take up all four spaces. W was that your question? I'm not sure or if that answered yeah. it. Okay, great, thanks. Great. All right. Again, if, if you don't think of any questions now, we are um, we are more than happy to to answer those later on. If you want us to take uh, you know a few moments to to think about uh, to think about uh, some of the questions that you're thinking of. It looks like we have another question. Uh, do we visit Shackleton's grave? So uh, that's a great question. Um, so all of our excursions, of course, are, are weather dependent. Uh, so I'd be happy to follow up with you on that, on sort of the likelihood and, and what the past was on visiting Shackleton's grave. I think that's uh, a really great experience, uh, of course, with, with Shackleton himself, the legend that he is, uh, and we have a tour named after him. Um, so let me go ahead and I can follow up with, uh, with Abby on that, who would, uh, who would be more than happy to, to answer that question for you and, and sort of the likelihood on, on how often uh, we get to go to, to the grave. Right, right. Right now, it's, I know you spend three or four days exploring South Georgia. Um, and it is weather dependent on ice conditions, whether, whether that happens or not. Um, but you do retrace Shackleton's route 
um, to go back towards the South Shetland Islands um, on that. But as far as visiting the grave, um, sometimes this happens, sometimes it doesn't, but we will, uh, it depends on weather and ice conditions and the expedition leader on board will give daily updates both in the morning and in the evening. Uh, regarding what you're going to be able to see that day. So it's they, they do a really great job of staying in touch. And uh, to, like we like we like to say is that they know what you want to see more than you know what you want to see <laughs> because they know all the special spots. Um, and they're going to try to get you there because they want you to have the best experience possible. Perfect. All right. And also, um, after the webinar, we are following up uh, and sending out a video of this, the recording. So if you wanted to go back and look at the cabins or some of the excursions and uh, find a little more information there, that's good as well. Or ask any, once we finish the webinar and you have a few questions that arise, uh, I'm happy to answer those afterwards as well. It looks like there's another questions about uh, health or weight restrictions. Um, every sh uh, the expedition does have a doctor on board. And before you go, there is a medical form that you are required to fill out that if you have any conditions, uh, the doctor does have to sign. And so all those forms are given to the doctor before um, the trip. So the doctor can prepare maybe with medications or just knowing the health of everybody on board. Um, and they determine if there is some kind of health restriction or you have a health issue that is severe enough um, that there, there is a chance that you might not be allowed. Most people can go, but if there are certain conditions, um, because once you're out there, you don't really, it's, it's difficult to get uh, emergency medical treatment besides the doctor on board. There's no quick way out of Antarctica. There's uh, not really any flights. Um, and usually a ship that's nearby has to come and assist. And um, that typically doesn't happen, but it could. So they do, they do monitor those health forms. Um, as far as weight restrictions, I'm not really sure. I don't, I haven't heard of that. And I don't think so. Do you know, Dennis? Yeah, so there's no weight restrictions, of course. Um, however, if, uh, if there are obviously mobility issues, so if, if you, you can comfortably walk up and down stairs, you're gonna be completely fine on board our ship. That's really all that matters. Again, please go ahead and check with your general doctor uh, prior to, to booking your tour. Um, and just to see um, if, uh, if, um, you know, if there's any questions or concerns there, uh, you can have that discussion with your general doctor. But as long as you can comfortably walk up and down stairs, you're going to be completely fine. Uh, and again, with what Abby said, there is a pre-departure um, sort of form that you fill out, and that just goes over any mobility issues or any concerns that you might have. All right, so it looks like we have another question here. Do prices for the excursions include round-trip airfare from U.S. to Ushuaia or Montefiedo? <clears throat> All right, so for, the, for our Antarctica tours, uh, we don't have any um, pre-flight packages, uh, so the tour would begin and end in Ushuaia, uh, and that's sort of uh, sort of the sort of the package there. Uh, we, uh, Abby, do you know if um, the passengers could book airfare for with you? Yes, yes, we can help with airfare, either international or the domestic flight that's between Buenos Aires and Ushuaia. Um, there's a couple of different airlines that do that route, and so we can assist with, with flights and hotels, because even though there's a pre-trip hotel night included with, with all of your trips, certainly these trips, um, there is, if you fly through another South American city, we typically recommend a second overnight as well, um, although that's not mandatory. Um, but yes, we can help with flights and hotels. Perfect, and I do see another question here uh, what is the cost for the camping and kayaking? Uh, so the, it, the pricing does vary uh, throughout the season. Um, and just one thing before I, I talk about the pricing with camping, I just wanted to note uh, for the first uh, trip in October and the last two March departures, camping unfortunately is not an option just because of 
the lack of daylight and the lack of ice available. Um, and we just want to keep our, our the safety of our passengers uh, at the forefront of everything we do. So I just wanted to let you guys know that now. Uh, but the pricing uh, around for the kayaking is going to be around $700 or so, and then the camping uh, between $700 to $1,100 uh, for those excursions. And again, uh, go ahead and check with uh, Expedition Travel Advisor and their, and their stellar team uh, to get the most accurate pricing as it does fluctuate depending on the departure you're interested in. All right, so we will I guess, stick around for another couple of minutes or so. So if you do have those questions, you're welcome to send those in. Otherwise, um, again, this is recorded and, uh, and you're more than welcome to reach out.